الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمين we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is most worthy and deserving of all praise. We ask Allah and we ask Allah alone to guide us, to prevent us from being misguided and from misguiding others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our shortcomings, our sins, those that we commit knowingly and those that we commit unknowingly and in error. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his noble prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to bless his noble companions, his family, and the righteous everywhere. Ameen. Respected brothers and sisters, we turn to the Quran for guidance and we turn to the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to navigate our lives, or at least we should. And the Qur'an does in places answer specific questions. The Qur'an is in total, or by and large, the Qur'an is not a book of law. Law is certainly extracted from the Qur'an, and we derive Sharia, Islamic law, divine law from the Qur'an and from the teachings of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Qur'an is not a book of law alone. In fact, by and large, the Qur'an seeks to address or answer broader questions than the specifics that are often the topics that are discussed when we talk about law, the do's and don'ts, the intricacies of inheritance law, or the requirements for a valid dissolution of marriage, and so on, family law, even governance, siyasa, is certainly discussed in the Qur'an, but those type of minute details are extrapolated by our scholars after a careful analysis of the principles that are exposed and that are discussed in the Qur'an. And so the Qur'an underlines those broader moral imperatives, those broader teachings by which we should attempt to not only navigate life but also provide for us that moral compass, that guide or that roadmap by which we should live our lives. And among those sort of meta questions or broader questions that we can find answers for in the Qur'an, for instance, is the timeless question of why are we here? What is the purpose of life? Where do I as a human being fit in in the broader universe? Or my purpose in my day-to-day -day existence. Those broader questions, the meaning of life, if you will, the purposes of life, those are the questions that the Qur'an seeks to provide a roadmap, answers, and the moral imperative and the moral compass by which we should attempt to answer those questions. And three particular verses that I want to focus on this afternoon seek to present that moral imperative or that compass that we should use to navigate our lives. 
The first is found in the 51st chapter of the Quran, a verse that I'm sure all of us are familiar with, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنْ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ that the sole purpose of creation, right? That meaning of life, the purpose of life question. That Allah is saying that the sole exclusive purpose of the creation of humankind and jinnkind is ibadah, is ubudiyah, is servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to serve him to serve Allah. The concept or the idea of being an abid, the ubad, those who are slaves and servants to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second verse is in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of a conversation that took place in the history of creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of this conversation. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَائِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا And when your Lord said to the angels that I am creating or I am placing on the earth a representative, a khalifa, one who represents Allah, one who represents the deen of Allah. That contract that humanity, that the human being has forged with his Lord or her Lord, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The idea of vicegerency or being a representative, a khalifa. And the third verse that I want to focus on is in which and this is found in the 30 in Surah Al-Ahzab, the 33rd chapter of the Quran. Inna aradna al-amanata 'ala as-samawati wal ard. That indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala revealed the trust, the amana of the heavens and earth. And it was revealed this trust was revealed to the heavens and the earth and even the mountains and the trees. And they all fled from that, that responsibility of bearing the amana. insan, Except human beings. They were foolish and foolhardy, but they accepted this amana, this trust of the heavens and earth and of all of creation. And indeed, human beings were uh, foolhardy or were ignorant in understanding the full complexity of that amana. And why I chose these three particular verses, because there are obviously several other verses of the Quran that we can draw on to, as I said at the outset of the, uh, of the outset, that to answer those broader questions of the purpose of life, the meaning of our lives. Why I chose these three particular verses is because these three verses present or create or speak to and establish a relationship between human beings and Allah and between human beings. That is to say, our relationship to our Lord and our relationship to each and each and each and other. Our, our, our relationship with one another and our relationship more importantly with Allah. And I would submit that this relationship that is being established both with regards to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our relationship with one another has three facets to it or three aspects of this relationship. The first is a contractual relationship, right? We are entering into a contract. 
a social contract with one another, but more importantly, a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, the very notion of deen, right? Deen, when we use this word or expression to mean our religious affairs, to conduct our religious affairs, this is the deen of Allah, right? That the, the word deen or the expression itself means a contract, a contractual relationship that we have with Allah. And like any other contract, you have obligations, certain fulfillments that you have to fulfill or obligations that you must meet in order for you to be in, uh, for you to be uh, 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 in, uh, in a relation, in a contractual relationship and abiding by the principles of that contract. Otherwise, you are found in violation of that contract if you do not fulfill the obligations and the responsibilities that are in that contract. Maliki Yomidin, Allah is the master, the owner of the day of judgment, we say in the Quran, right? This is how we often translate it. Maliki Yomidin, the day that the contract is due. That's Yomidin. That's the last day, the day of judgment is the day in which our obligations, the terms of our contract will be determined to have been either fulfilled or that we have negated that contract or that we are found in violation of that contractual relationship. But it also presents because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us His Khalifa, the representatives of God on this planet. We bear the amana, as the other verse tells us. And this presents that social contract, the, the contract that we have with one another. As the, as the, uh, as the tradition explains it, hukukul ibad, excuse me, hukukul Allah, the obligations that we owe to Allah, the hukuk, the haq that Allah has upon us, and hukuk al ibad, the obligations, the social contract that we have with one another, with the rest of the human be with the rest of the human race, with the rest of civilization. Not only that, with the rest of the creation, the heavens and earth, and the obligations that we have uh, with regards to our earth, our planet, that which we live on. And then thirdly, beyond the contractual, excuse me, the, the third uh, uh, feature of this relationship that these three verses establish is a custodial one. Because the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered up to all of creation, right? Inna aradna al-amana ta'ala samawati wal ard That Allah offered this amana, this trust, Right? This obligation, this uh, of holding or being a custodian of the heavens and earth. And he offered it to all of creation. And all of creation, they fled from the responsibilities of that obligation, of that amana, of that trust, except human beings. And so the contractual being a representative of Allah. And third, being a custodial or having a custodial relationship. And what these three verses present, brothers and sisters, is precisely that moral code by which we should live our lives. The obligations that we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the obligations that we have to one another. And what we find with these contractual relationships and, these, and the idea of being a custodian and being stewards to one another is that in it we find the way in which we should conduct our affairs with our day-to-day -day life. The obligations and the responsibilities that we have on a daily basis with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
with one another and the planet that we live on. And so the ideas of social consciousness, being conscious of our society, the moral, fa the, the moral fabric of the society in which we live in, to being a force of good, to being a force of social change, of positive social change, of a civic engagement. That is an obligation that we find in these verses. Because we have a responsibility of being stewards to one another, of being custodians of the heavens and earth. The idea of environmental consciousness, of avoiding waste, of being careful with which we, uh, of how we take care of the planet, of how we live on this earth, that environmental consciousness and, those, and that idea of social consciousness is presented to us in these verses of the Qur'an not as a choice, but as a moral, as, as a moral uh, compass by which we should live our lives. This is a responsibility that we bear. It is a part of the contract that we have, not something that is superfluous to it or something that is uh, voluntary. It's not just nice to be involved civically or socially or having a sense of environmental consciousness. That's not just some modern liberal sensibility. But rather what we find is that is an obligation that we have been placed and that we have entrusted ourselves with with regards to why we find ourselves here and the purpose of our lives is to be a force of positive social good, to be environmentally and socially conscious, to be civically engaged. These are obligations. These are, as I said, moral imperatives. These are imperatives that we find as part of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with one another. And so we as a community, brothers and sisters, this precious Muslim community who bears these responsibilities of social consciousness, environmental consciousness, and civic engagement, we are, find ourselves in a place where not only must we feel on an individual basis, each and every one of us, a sense of an obligation to be involved, but that this community should present to the rest of the human species and to the rest of creation an ability to be the vanguards of change, to be those to be at the forefront for bringing about social and environmental and civic engagement at a level that is unparalleled because that is a moral imperative that we have brothers and sisters again these are not just something that is kind of a modern or liberal sensibility right this is something as i said or as i would submit to you is something that is a moral imperative that we find that is integral to the contractual and representative relationship and custodial relationship that the Qur'an places upon us as being the custodians of the amana, as being God's Khalifa, as being created for the purpose of serving Allah and serving His creation, serving one another with regards to the obligations that we owe one another, the haqq of Allah and the hukuk that we have with one another. And so this idea of not only serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and one another is something that is at the very essence and at the very core of the human enterprise and why we are created. The very purpose of life is to serve and, to, and, and the obligations that we have to our Creator and in turn the obligations that we have to one another. So when we talk about 
creating community, a sense of community. That community must be a community that respects the individual, that allows the individual to come into that community and to grow and to feel nurtured, to feel a sense that we are truly stewards of one another, that we care about one another, but that also that cumulatively and collectively that this community and as a community that we will serve needs that are beyond ourselves that beyond just the needs of the community that rather we serve to a broader purpose and that is where civic engagement social consciousness come into play that we are agents of change in the in, in america in the country in which we live in the communities in which we dwell and these are not just again niceties or something that we do as a pastime but rather i would submit that these are obligations that we have that are integral to our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are integral to our deen with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the contractual nature of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I pray that we as individuals and as a community can begin to think about ways in which we can both individually and collectively be a source of good, be agents of change, and be a moral force in the communities in which we live. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلنا به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما همزه على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تأخذنا نبي وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاه <تصفيق>